It was day two of oral submission for the Defense Council in the SRC international trial. Najib Razak's lawyer spent the day refuting the prosecution's argument that Najib has vested interests in SRC and that he had used his power as Prime Minister, Finance Minister and Advisor Emeritus of the company to divert funds from SRC into his private accounts. By the Malaysian Insight, this is The People vs. Najib Razak. Follow us into the courtroom where it all happens. I'm Patrick Teo. Najib arrived in court dressed in a bright blue suit paired with an equally bright blue tie. He went quickly through the motion of providing his details, sanitizing his hands and getting his temperature recorded before being allowed into the court complex. This morning, Najib's lawyer Farhan Reed continued with the defense's oral submission. He started off by disputing that Najib had power in SRC International. Farhan referred to Article 116 of SRC's Memorandum and Articles of Association, or MNA for short. Article 116 granted the Prime Minister, Najib at the time, to appoint board members. The lawyer said this cannot translate to Najib having an interest in the company. He used Petronas, Malaysia's largest oil and gas company and a government-linked company, as an example. Farhan said it was common for government-linked companies to have such a clause inserted so as to ensure that the company's direction is in line with the government of the day. He then added that Najib might not have even known that the clause was added. If he had no input in the insertion of this article, he cannot be said to have an interest simply because someone vested in him the power he didn't even know about at the time, Farhan argued. Moving on, Farhan brought up SRC's loan from Retirement Fund Inc. or KWAP. KWAP had given two loans to SRC, 2 billion ringgit in August 2011 and 2 billion ringgit in March 2012, 4 billion ringgit in total. Farhan was now referring to the testimony of the prosecution's 43rd witness, retired Finance Ministry Sekjen Maliami Hamad. Maliami had testified in court that he felt pressured by Najib to prepare the government guarantee for the loan. He said he knew that they were following instructions from Najib. However, Farhan points out that Maliami was also pressured by former Treasury Secgen Wan Abdul Aziz Wan Abdullah. Therefore, we cannot say that Najib was the one who pressured Maliani to prepare the government guarantee for the first KWAP loan, the lawyer concluded. Next, Farhan questioned the credibility of Ahmad Husni Mohammad Hanatsia's testimony. He was the former second finance minister and the prosecution's 56th witness. Of all the witnesses who took the stand in this trial, none voiced their grievances against Najib as openly as Husni. Najib, the ex-cabinet minister said, had not only blocked him out of matters regarding 1MDB and SRC, he had also accused him of corruption and sexual harassment. Farhan says this was a deeply personal issue to be brought to the stand and questioned Husni's credibility and his ability to tell the truth. Husni, in his testimony, also told the court that he wanted to go to Switzerland to recoup SRC's money that was stuck there. But Najib did not allow him to do so. The lawyer said that the fact that Najib stopped Ahmad Husni from going to Switzerland was not to hide anything, but merely that the SRC board was sent instead of Husni. Before court broke for lunch, Farhan brought up Najib's bank statements. In his testimony, Najib said, from the time he opened his accounts at Ambank in 2011 until 2015, which was when news of the 1MDB scandal broke, he had never seen a single copy of his bank statements. 
Farhan said it was because the statements were deliberately kept from him. We are not beneficiaries of donations. We don't have under our belt the weight of the concerns of this country. Unlike us, Najib had no time to keep track of his funds, the lawyer said. The lawyer concluded by saying that the court should not convict Najib based on the court of public opinion. And with that, the court broke for lunch. As usual, Najib quickly exited the courtroom and was promptly whisked away by his driver. When proceedings resumed at 2.30 p.m., Havindajit Singh took over from Farhan. He told Judge Naslan that if Najib's statements were removed and if they just looked at the facts, his guilt can just be hypothesized. The lawyer said that although Najib had the authority to hire and fire in SRC, there is no evidence that he used this power. There was no circumstance in this case where Najib forced the board to do anything. The board, he said, acted independently according to the meeting minutes and there was no mention of the 42 million ringgit. This, therefore, negates the criminal breach of trust as there was no influence by Najib, he said. Harvey then brought up fugitive businessman Joe Lowe. The lawyer said it was Joe Lowe who had manoeuvred to make sure Najib's checks did not bounce. Joanna Yu, Ambang's relationship manager, had testified that the former Prime Minister's accounts were always in the red and the bank had to bend over backwards to ensure that his cheques didn't bounce. The lawyer ended his submission for the day and informed the judge that he will be talking about the Arab donations tomorrow. Court adjourned for the day. The proceedings will continue tomorrow morning. This podcast is produced, written and mixed by Revati Srupamaniam. I'm Patrick Teo.